Theodore Sturgeon was the most important short story writer in the early formation of you know, what people now might call literary science fiction. I don't know if modern science fiction or even, if, I don't know if the new wave would exist without Theodore Sturgeon. Theodore Sturgeon is a golden age science fiction writer, probably best known for Sturgeon's Law, which states that 90% of science fiction is crud, but then 90% of everything is crud. This is often applied to music and films, to explain why they seem to be getting worse, when it is only the good examples from the past that survive. He also worked on Star Trek, creating the Vulcan salute in his episode, A Mock Time, in which Spock is overtaken by an insurmountable urge to return to his homeworld and engage in a violent mating ritual. Sexuality is a theme that pervades most of Sturgeon's work, but so is the family. His most famous novel, More Than Human, about the next stage in evolution, concerns a group of people who begin to function as a single entity. He describes each individual as an atom, and the whole as a molecule. This new breed of human, which he calls Homo Gestalt, as opposed to Homo sapiens, possess extraordinary abilities, which leads to them becoming the dominant form of life. Close-knit communities are also explored in if all men were brothers, would you let one marry your sister? Which is the novelette I want to talk about today. It was edited by Harlan Ellison and published in Dangerous Visions, an anthology which aimed to push boundaries, particularly with regards to sex. It also contains the story Iron Gomorrah by Samuel R. Delaney, which explores the sexuality of agender people, and Sex and or Mr. Morrison, which Lewis Cole described as a celebration of desire for the alien. Sturgeon's novelette follows an explorer called Charlie Bucks, who becomes obsessed with a planet called Vexvelt, which is shunned by the rest of the universe. What he discovers makes him throw up. The residents of Vexvelt all breed within their families, in a manner similar to the rearing of cattle. Sturgeon refers to herd characteristics being revitalized and reinforced. He says that a bull can reproduce with three or four generations before being supplanted by a younger bull, without causing any defects. Incest, he argues, under the right conditions, leads to stabilization, purification, and greater survival value. He develops some of the ideas found in Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, when he goes on to describe some of the psychological advantages. He describes sibling rivalry as inverted love feelings, well salted with horror and guilt, arguing it would be psychologically beneficial for brothers and sisters to explore their sexualities with each other. He also says that incestuous communities would allow mankind to progress more slowly, growing larger in groups before mingling with each other, and that would lead to greater stability. Algis Budgeries called the novelette terrible, and I can see why. Though beautifully constructed, its moral is repellent to most people. What it does do, like most great science fiction, is make you consider a different viewpoint. I have a feeling that Sturgeon was going for shock value in an era where sexuality was still repressed. By overstepping the boundaries by so many strides, and challenging social norms, he helped achieve the purpose of dangerous visions. <laughs>